Hey everyone, it's Will. I haven't done one of these in a long time because I just haven't felt like it, but I thought I would try doing them again because it's a fun way to just kind of document uh, things that I'm thinking about. It's sort of like a video journal that you get to witness and comment on below. This talk is, they used to be called Coffee for Will, so I'm going to call them co Coffee, not Coffee for Will. These talks, I used to call them Coffee with Will. And my hope is, is that um, maybe if you're watching this, you'll check out some of the community events that I put on in the community, like concertsinthedark.com or stringsinthewoods.com. Those are my two babies that I put out to the world to bring people together, either with music or nature or meditation, mindfulness. And I like to challenge the way that... Um, we hear music and we experience music in the world. So if you're interested in my work, there is a link in the comments below. We have a concert this coming Friday featuring the music of the Beatles in a gorgeous historic building over 140 years old in Travis Heights in Austin, Texas. So check that out, concertsinthedark.com. So I was listening to the song Hooked on a Feeling that, um, <clears throat> that my girlfriend recommended. She said she loves this song. <laughs> And I, I put it on and I started listening to that song, Hooked on a Feeling. How many of you are familiar with Hooked on a Feeling? And I honestly wasn't that familiar with it. <laughs> so I put it on and I started looking at some of the comments. And it struck me immediately how in the world of dating or of pursuing a romantic partner... Um, there are different ways that men go about it and women go about it that are, I think, shaped by our culture, the culture that we're in. And and it kind of surprises me because I know that I feel that some of that cultural programming is in me, but I've experienced it in a much different way. And I will speak to my current uh, experience of falling in love uh, back in, in December. And I, you know, I'll speak to almost all of the experiences and the way that I've experienced falling in love and finding a romantic partner. And I think, I, you know, <clears throat> so I'm just going to say that it's interesting how different men experience uh, romantic love. And so one of the comments said, even though I know I would never have a chance with that girl, I still like that feeling. So it's sort of like there's this idea that women, especially beautiful, gorgeous women, are above, you know, like we, we, we date up or we marry up and we have to prove ourselves to these women. And I think that creates more separation. I think that, yes, I can feel that 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 that, that feeling of, of, of attraction to a member of the opposite sex. And and I can I can love that feeling. But I'm not going to operate from a place of lack, a place of like, I'm below this woman and maybe I'll get lucky. You know, a lot of people say like, are you going to get lucky that she might pick me? Even though I do r recognize that there is some of that in play in the biological paradigm of, of um, mating. So, you know, <clears throat> that women only have one egg a month and so they have to be selective. So, yes, I recognize that. But... As opposed to thinking that I'm going to have to win this girl, I've never been a person who has has subscribed to that belief. And so that, of course, I believe that that's fine if other men want to look at it that way, that they have to win over and that it's a competition. But I've always felt like, sure, I, I could be attracted to what I see as a very beautiful, attractive woman. And I have tendencies. I, you know, some people talk about there's a type. And... I, you might see uh, maybe some p patterns in my past relationships of the type that I, but what I like is I, I really enjoy getting to know that person as a friend, as, and seeing what bubbles up, seeing what arises and what commonalities we have and enjoying the, the, the arising of, of the, the friendship and, and the Venn diagram of our interests and loves and how we, we share those things and, and just organically, no matter how stunningly beautiful, like other men, just they're into this whole thing about she's beyond your, um, your pay grade or whatever, you know, because she's so stunningly beautiful. Like, what the heck does that mean? You know, it's like, 
But inside every human being, no matter how stunningly beautiful and perfect they are, is a human being that wants to connect, that has interests, that has loves, that has passions about life, that just wants to share. So I've never led from that point of view. I, you know, I may be overwhelmed at the beauty of a woman, but if I am, if I'm feeling nervous and I'm feeling that and it's overwhelming me, I try to reorient myself and just remind myself, this is another human being that has need, has needs, just like any other human being it has needs, it has wonders, it has dreams, it has, has, is, is suffering, that has faults, or I don't want to say faults, that has challenging areas in their life, just like me. And if I was blind, how would I see this person? How would I connect with them? We are such visual creatures. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I, you know, I connect with the, the sound of the voice and how a person communicates through their voice. That's what I fall in love with. I fall in love with the stories and the, and again, the Venn diagram of how, how our stories um, cross over it. The passion of sharing those stories, the passion that just arises organically. And I can say all the loves that I've had in my life, that's how it's happened. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful that each person has had has brought to the table their own special being of who they are. And I feel like I don't subscribe again to this sort of like typing kind of thing. Yes, there are certain things that I love in every person, but I love the differences in the people that I fall in love with in my life and my past partners. So I just wanted to share that. I wanna know what you think below. You know, my mind wants to, wants to ascribe, ascribe this sort of definition of like, oh, that's like kind of a, a baby boomer thing, you know, to, to be like, I'm going to win this woman. There's no chance that I'll have with this person, this feeling of less than. And then when you do win them, then you keep telling them all over again, I can't believe you chose me and I, I will do everything for the rest of my life to show you how grateful I am that you chose me and... So I see that a lot in baby boomers or the generations before. So I kind of want to understand like where that came from, the man being less than, rather than just two souls, a male and a female coming together and sharing the experience of life. That's that's when I was a kid and a teenager, I dreamt of my romantic partner being somebody that I could have a sanctuary of of our a sanctuary that we would create for our hearts and our experiences, the sanctuary where we could go together, always have each other's backs, not one being better than the other, not, you know, of course I'd be grateful for that. I'm being in my life, but, but, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to share and it's interesting to share what I felt as a man going forward and how I have felt healed by the relationships with women that I've had and how culture has shaped me unconsciously to feel that I'm less than because I'm a man, because I'm a, an oppressor, because of all the things that men have done in the past, which I didn't do. But it does make me, you know, que just question, you know, like, well, uh, what do I need to do to show up as a person, not as a man, but just as an individual, as a loving human being <laughs> with, you know, and, and I know that, that there are, and, you know, and, <clears throat> anyway. Um, I want to recognize that the the uh, the damage that men have done in the past, and how could I heal that as being as a human, as a man, maybe too, going forward in my interactions with other women or people. Um, and I think that my mindfulness and uh, meditation training has helped that a lot. Has helped me not attach to a story that I'm an oppressor just because men were a certain way before me for thousands of years, and there's the patriarchy, it doesn't mean that I am a, a patriarch, but it does mean that I can learn to be sensitive, and I can learn to be sensitive to the cultural stories that are embedded in the other women out there, and be open to hearing, hearing how they feel in this world where men seem to run it. And, but, <clears throat> but there are stories that I, that affect me. You know, <laughs> so, and and uh, th that affect me, uh, just uh, ha opening my heart. So I have I have no complaints, but I have encountered people 
that um, have stories of being hurt by the stories of our culture. And the best that I can do is just try to love them and try to have boundaries about how I'm available. And one of the ways that I think I'm available to humanity in general is through the events that I do, like Strings in the Woods and Concerts in the Dark. It's a really safe way for people to get to know me through an event, to get to know what I care about, and 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 there be, there be a sense of boundaries. Like, you can have an event, we can experience it together as an instant community, and maybe that helps heal some of this patriarchy, some of this... These, this, this messaging that men and women or that humans have felt for so many years that through an experience, I like to think about the phrase that I used to hear in the 70s as a kid, which was think, what was it? Uh, act local, think global. So by acting local, I invite people to come to my events and they're all um, sliding scale. It's like you can contribute whatever financial level you're available at and have a sense of coming together, enjoying an evening of healing, enjoying an evening of going out in nature, hearing music, feeling, having a, uh, an experience that might bring you into a feeling space where you feel connected, where you feel safe. And having more of those over and over and over and over again, becoming, forming habits where you seek out those experiences, I think is ultimately healing. And I think is going to help the world heal. And so I feel very connected um, with doing these and having these concerts in the dark, strings in the woods, and I'm planning a retreat, possibly for November, where we go out for a whole weekend and we spend a whole weekend together. So what could be better than doing that and bringing people together to feel good? You know, I had uh, the experience with my girlfriend my love, my love of my life. <laughs> I mean, it just makes me feel, I can feel right now. I'm so certain of it. Um, uh, last Sunday, having a concert with Guy Forsyth and her being next to me laying down on a yoga mat and the arising of the perfect moment of the music and the lyrics leading all of us in this very safe space in the dark at a yoga studio it is one of the moments I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. It was the feeling that we were all tapped in to this love and the certainty of it, the certainty of that this can exist, this fragile connection. And, and I think that everybody knows what I'm talking about because everybody has had some kind of musical experience, whether it's going to Stevie Wonder, whatever that musical experience is, and having that People seek out music in large numbers. They seek out going to concerts. Like, where else do you see people coming together and th with thousands and thousands of people? Why do they do it? You tell me below and they're thick. So I just know that without having to over-explain it or over uh, sort of convince you that you can know what I'm talking about, having 36 or to 40 people in a room hearing acoustic music, beautiful lyrics, with your love, next to you, with other people, walking, and I'm walking around and playing the violin, and spreading that energy with, with the sound, it isn't something that you have to think about, you just feel it. Sure, there's probably multiple studies that will explain what goes on with the chemicals in your body, and I could point to those, but you could Google them. Look up peer-reviewed studies about music and how it affects uh, the nervous system and the stress response, how it lowers the stress response. But I think that you can know it from your heart by coming to these events. Stringsinthewoods.com and concertsinthedark.com. So if you enjoyed this talk, this is my first Coffee with Will talk in so long, and it started with me talking about the song. I already forgot the song. <laughs> that love and feeling? Let me look I started with talking about hooked on a feeling in the comments, very interesting comments about different ways that people view a romantic relationship and how they fall into that and how I feel so lucky to my last, you know, the, the, I mean, all of them, all of my romantic relationships that I've had, uh, all started because of just 
a willingness between both of us, at least this is what I felt. Let me just say what this is what I felt. There was a willingness to just explore and be present with with the the possibility of creation and the possibility of exploring and adventuring. And what how could there be what what's greater than that? There's no need to feel like, oh, I, there's no chance I have with this person. There's never a chance. I mean, you could think like, I don't know if I have a chance. Maybe I have a chance. Maybe I don't. Um, gosh, I'm sweating. But you could think about, I'm just going to connect with this person as another human being and see what arises. Maybe friendship will arise. Maybe friendship will ar 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 arise. Arise or arrive. Maybe romantic feelings will arrive. I'm going to love whatever arrives. Maybe nothing will arrive. <laughs> Let's just see. Let's just see what arise, arises. Okay, there's my love advice. Everybody take care and go do something every day that scares you. And come to a Strings in the Woods concert, stringsinthewoods.com or concertsinthedark.com. We have one this Friday. And I'd love to know who is still watching right now because that one person, oh, it's Satori. Satori, when are you going to come? When are you going to come? I would love to hear your you, Satori, because you're a fellow healer who I've never been in the room with, possibly will help me delegate so that I can do more of the thing that I love to do. Satori, have we ever been in the room together? Maybe at Ecstatic Dance. I enjoy your posts. I enjoy uh, what few digital interactions we've had, but I would love to see you at Strings in the Woods. And I would love to give you a hug. <laughs> All right, y'all take care. Bring your, your family, bring your friends, bring your lovers. Where was it? Was it ecstatic dance? Was it one of my events? We've been communicating so like for at least the last what three or four or five years on here. I know we talked on the phone. <laughs> All right. By the way, Hail the Girls. Was it at the show at um uh the the park with the cliff behind me? Because that, that was Hilda Girls with Rhonda Allen. Here's a funny thought that just came in my head. I was looking at my hair and I just got a great supercut, not supercuts. What was the place called? Uh, it's on Congress. Anyway, I got my hair cut there and I thought, oh, this is pretty good. I'm looking pretty good. I'm getting more cleaned up, <laughs> cleaned up uh, image. And then somebody recently on one of my videos said, Will, brush your hair, comb your hair. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just going to be the messy hair guy, musician forever. So so you better accept it or, or leave me alone. <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. If you look at composers and you look at like Beethoven and you look at ma major compose, um, conductors of orchestras that are playing before these totally wealthy, well-to-do audiences... A lot of them have super messy hair. They do. Check it out.